Hey folks, welcome to part two of my roundup of the 2014 RGCD 16K Compo. If you haven't caught the first part, you'll see an annotation link on screen allowing you to check that out. But I wanted to keep this short because there's not really much to say. We've done half the games in part one, we've got the other half to do part two, so let's get on with the show. The roundup resumes with the first game we're looking at, which is P-Zero Snake. As the name suggests, it's a take on the classic Snake formula, but it's got a few great twists on the way. Like other clones, you're tasked with moving through each of the stages, collecting the tokens that are, that are placed around the level, while avoiding the walls, the obstacles, and of course, your own tail. The biggest difference though is the controls. Most snake clones use the joystick to pick a direction and your snake will turn and move in that direction. Here, your snake moves forward, but at the same time, it will also turn clockwise. So if left alone, it will move in circles. By pressing the fire button, you'll make it move counterclockwise. So to move through the level, you need to modulate using the fire button. You know, you press it down, let it go, press it down, let it go, to, to get it on a direction and use that to control the turning. So it's got some unique controls, some really crisp graphics, excellent sound, which includes speech that is a bit of a rarity for a small cartridge game, and it's some excellent presentation, which includes level passwords. Uh, it's a pick up and play game, and it's well worth checking out. If you're a long time fan of the channel, you've seen my gameplay of Paper Plane previously. If you've not, it's quite a straightforward game. Uh, you control a paper plane that's flying uh, down a series of obstacles and you use the joystick left to right to avoid the obstacles. The idea is to keep yourself going as long as possible without crashing into anything and that earns your, your score. I really enjoy playing this on its original release as you'll have seen if you've watched the video. And even now, it's still just as fun a game to play. It's a straightforward pick up and play game. It controls really well. It's got some crisp cartoony graphics, some excellent sim music in the background. It's tight and it's one of those games where you know if you messed up. I don't really think I have much more to add on that. And if you want to see a bit more, then I'd say check that video out. But it is one that is definitely worth playing. Console style and role playing games aren't exactly something you see a lot of on the C64. So it's a breath of fresh air that once been submitted to the contest, and that's Penultimate Fantasy. As is the case with these kind of games, you're tasked with exploring the landscape, finding equipment, weapons, spells, and using that to bail your way through a series of dungeons, and locating amulets. So I'm not the best at these, and it means you're not going to get the best gameplay as a result, but I'm really impressed with what the developers were put, able to put onto a cartridge. There's a large number of scenes and places to explore, there's some nice press, graphics, sound and presentation. The controls and UI work well. And it's it's an excellent little game to play. If you're a real big fan of these kind of games, or you're a little curious, definitely go check it out. For me, I, while being impressive with it, was not one I really clicked with. But it's really good to see this kind of, the competition allow for people to try these kind of games that aren't really that well known on the C64. And in another adaptation of a mobile game, we've got Pixel City Skater. The title's a bit self-explanatory in that you're skating through a level that is pixel art. There's two modes on offer. The first, you make your way through a set of individual screens, the level, you know, flick screen style. The second is an endless run where you're just going as long as you can. The controls are straightforward in that you pretty much just have to time your jumps with the fire button. Uh, you're skated when jumping has a predictable arc, and you need to judge that to jump over gaps, obstacles, and avoid hitting uh, the roof or other obstacles above you. The pixel art style here is really unique. Most C64 games, of course, use the multicolor modes with the rectangular pixels. Here, they've gone for a style that allows them to get sort of chunkier square pixels, and it's actually rather fresh. The control scheme is simple, the graphics charming, along with a great sit tune in the background, and it's well worth having a check out and a bit of a play. Now we get a bit of a unique one here, and that's Race, which, as the name says, is a, a car racing game. The first thing that stands out with this is the fact that you can handle up to eight players, providing you have the right hardware, which is actually pretty impressive. I don't think a C64 game has ever had eight player simultaneous play before. So once you pick the, once you sort out the number of players, you'll have your joysticks ready, you then get to pick a track there's either a fairly simple sort of oval course or the main game which is a horizontally scrolling um, course. And the idea is that you race through the circuit, do a number of laps, or you start with the other course getting from the start to the finish and try to do it in as quick a time as possible. 
as you, you know, bounce off the walls and into the, the road, on the, you know, off the side of the road, you'll get a time penalty. And the idea is you need to keep sort of control of your car, which feels a bit like a rally car in its controls, to keep yourself on track. And it's sort of something that didn't work for me is I felt the controls were a little looser than they really needed to be. And I found myself just going off the road plenty of times. I also didn't get a chance to check this game out in multiplayer. And it's really about the multiplayer experience. Playing it by yourself isn't really that much fun. So if you've got the setup for a party and you've, you know, you've got the joysticks, you've got the people, you've got the right interfaces, it's definitely worth having a spin for that. But in a position where you're trying to play it by yourself, it's probably a bit of a pass. For anyone who played Power Glove in the 2013 entries, or saw the enhanced version that I did a gameplay of a few months ago, you'll probably be excited by this by this next game, Tiger Claw, which is by the same author. The idea is it's using a lot of the same tech from Power Glove, and it's a flick screen platform beat em up, which is a bit of a mouthful, but the idea is simple. You're tasked with recovering a set of magical scrolls that have been stolen by three evil warlords. Do you know how to sort that out? You first need to explore the temples and recover a series of masks. The powers from those scrolls were tra partially transferred to those masks, and they'll give you, you know, extra abilities when you, before you go tackle these three warlords. Once you've defeated them, you you win the game. The controls are floaty, and I, from what I gather, I think they're being tweaked for the enhanced version. And the action is tough. This is one heck of a hard game. Um, but that's the kind of challenge that old games were known for. So if you're a fan of that, you should definitely check it out. It's really well put together, it plays well, it's tight, it's tough, it's a really good challenge, and one that is one of the better games that have, that's come out through the contest. And one more puzzle game for the entries, and that's Toys, a sliding block puzzler that has a few nice little tweaks. There's a simple enough story here. You need to move through a series of locations and tidy up your toy collection by matching the various toys together. Once you match all the pairs on a level, you move on to the next one. As with any good puzzle game, it starts off simple enough. You know, the levels and the layouts aren't that complicated, and you can do pretty much move through those levels nice and fast. But like any good puzzler, things get devious, and they'll get devious quickly, with some very nifty layouts that require a lot of brain thinking to move through properly. That does lead to what is my only negative point about the game, and that's that you can't quickly restart a level if you mess it up. Instead, each level runs against the clock, and you need to just wait for that to expire. Despite that, this has to be my favourite puzzler of the of the lot that was submitted. This kind of matching block puzzler isn't that unique on the C64, so it's good to have something a little different. As well, the controls and the presentation are very nicely put together to help solidify the package. In addition, one thing I really, really appreciate, the fact you can choose your starting level. Most puzzle games either have you start at level one or require to enter a password. Here, you can just use the joystick to select which level you want to start with, and you can go straight to it. Very, very handy. And it makes this game even better. And next we've got Tutti Frutti 64. It has the honour of being the second game in the competition that originated on a different Commodore machine. But rather than the VIC-20, this time it's the C16. Originally developed by Mr. Chip, uh, it's an arcade style game that takes a few things from some arcade gems like Mr. Doom and Pingo, but mashes it up in a really unique way. So the base, the story is simple. You have to take Super Strawberry through the orchard, collect the cherries, dispatch the enemies. Um, it really depends on the stage. There's actually a few different combinations of stages as you move through. And depending on the stage, you either dispatch them using your ball, or you have to crush them under some of the other pieces of fruit. So this footage you're seeing is the original competition release. There's actually an enhanced version that came out afterwards that uh, doesn't actually run off the cartridge, that's a normal disc image. And that fixes a few issues, adds a few bits and pieces and a nice little intro. I'll have a link of that down below so you can download that separately. Now this is a fun little charming arcade game. Like once I got to understanding how it all works, it was really fun to play, it's really polished. The C64 enhancements add quite a lot to the game. And the big advantage is, I now don't have to go dig out my plus four when I want to play it. So I think that's a bit of a win. Finally, to wrap out the contest entries, we've got Voivod Attack. The second drop out of the entries for this year, the idea is that you pilot your little starfighter through a series of space stations, uh, battle the way through defenses before having to go for the core, which is this steam engine located in the middle of the base. 
So as you battle out the enemy waves, they'll drop power-ups. Some of those are upgrades to your weapons, some of those might give you a bit of energy, and then there are bombs, and you use those bombs to attack this steam engine, which is done by pressing down and fire. When you take out the, 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 the engine, which is done by dropping three bombs into it, you get a nice cutscene of the station exploding before you move on to the next one. The downside is all the stations seem to have the same layout with the exception of color tweaks, but considering the cartridge size for the competition, that's a bit of an understandable limitation. Despite that, this is a really frenetic blast. You know, there aren't a large number of sprites on screen. You don't have, you know, your, your bullet hell style action, but it's really tense. You know, you've got to be sort of quick on the controls to get around everything. And the idea that you have to have an objective and not just blow through waves really does add a lot to the game. So really do go check this one out. I have to admit, this is one of the most polished games that's been submitted to the contest. So there we go. That's all 17 games from the 2014 contest. Covered, 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 introduced, and just shown what they look like. 17 is quite a lot of great new games for us CCD4 fans to all dig into. And I hope this gives you the chance to dig in get you interested in wanting to download and play them for yourself. I know that from these, there's a lot that I want to go back to and play. And I'm looking forward to going back to and playing some more. Even more importantly, I hope some of these get enhanced commercial releases because I'll certainly be wanting to hunt those down if they do come out. But there's always got to be a conclusion. There's always got to be a top three or a roundup of a roundup. So with, for me, my top three are as follows. At number three, it's toys. I'm not the biggest, yeah, I don't play a lot of puzzle games. So when, when I sort of stumbled on that and the list and started playing, I just really fell in love with it. It's a great puzzler. It uses a fairly simple concept, you know, sliding blocks to match them. And it slowly builds up on that with some great crafty level design. The aesthetics are charming, yeah. The graphics are nice and colorful. There's some nice charming music in there as well. And it all combines to a package that is a brain teaser that's really fun and really easy to pick up and play. Secondly, for number two, we have Voivod Attack. I enjoyed both shmup entries this year, and one of the things I found, I found it to be the more challenging game, you know. It's not just a straightforward, yeah, you know, survive the enemies and blast through, but rather you have this objective to take out the central steam engine, you have to navigate around the levels and avoid everything. And I think that it adds for an, a, enough of a unique flavor that makes the game just pop out on the C64 in its own special way. Lastly, number one, it's got to be P0 Snake. The controls are tight, you know, a simple single fire button game. It's some challenging gameplay and some amazing presentation to just... It's a real standout for what the C64 can do and for what a talented developer can do and push into 16K of cartridge ROM. It's perfect for a quick fix. It just plays incredibly tight and it's a game that is just so well done on so many levels that it took the... It, was, it just was easily my pick of the bunch. And there we are. This is the end of this. This is the end of the series. I don't. I will be returning next week, of course, with more conventional gameplays as I usually do. I just thought to have this out for the contest to show everything would be really good watch. Again, if you enjoyed both parts, please leave a, com a thumbs up and your comments. I'd love to hear what you think about the entries. Are there any that looked really cool that you wanted to check out? Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you next time.